what's happening in Wire Wizards. I just want to go through some stuff about the switch I did the other day. I really love the comments and the you know the video, the views and the likes or whatever. So I want to explain. I made a mistake there, okay? And I want to explain some reasons why I made the mistake. I was I had good intentions. It was meant to be like four mil flex parallel, and I thought, fuck, that's going to be heaps better than six mil stranded. But unfortunately, according to the records, that's not possible. Records, I should say, the fucking rule book. Well, the metering manual for Queensland. Now, I just wanted to also mention why I love Queensland so much because in my apprenticeship, man, I literally got to go and do lining work, like basic lining work, like just like pulling fuses and shit, running mains into the pillar, and we never got to hook them up, like physically put the mains right there. And one reason why, if you have a look, Specifically on Wikipedia, 3% of our meter retailer ride prices, so 3% of your power prices just comes from metering. That's because the boys are that competent in Queensland that we can do our jo job. So I'm just going to go through the other states here before I go through with what, how I fucked up and, you know, whatever. Man, I'll show you, I'm going to show you it, like, the screenshot of it and everything. So, Osgrid, okay, this is going to be a bit of a rant. If you want to say New in New South Wales Ausgrid, okay? So they they're owned by IFM investors at 54.4% and Australian Super 0.4%. And there's also New South Wales Treasury. That's the actual I think believe the government owns 49.6%. So the government doesn't own the majority of the fucking grid, okay? Now let's go to Endeavor Energy, Macquarie Infrastructure Real estate assets includes AMP, British Columbia, a fucking Canadian company, and Qatar Investor Authority, and it's on a 99-year lease. Okay. Okay. Let's look at Essential Energy. That's owned by the. That's actually owned by the New South Wales government. Let's go to South Australia. Okay. Shang Kong or Shang. Sh sh I don't even know how to fucking say it. Well. Shangshong um, Infrastructure Power Assets, they own 51% for the 200 year lease, okay? Crazy. You're, you're like your transmission lines, okay? Your trannies, your fucking, the shit that runs, the RMUs, the shit that's actually running this show is, is Electronet, has a 46.5%, that's less than half, share of the state, of the state grid corporation, okay? Victoria. Notice how the, some of these names keep rolling up again. In Victoria, okay? Government owns 20% in in Oznet Services Electrical. Also owns 60% of Jamina Distribution Victoria and 34% of United Energy Electrical Distribution Victoria. Okay. And the Shang Kong Infrastructure Power Assets owns 51% in City Power City City Power Electrical Distribution Network Victoria. That's a bit of a long title for your business. And Power Core Electrical Distribution from a wind farm, uh, uh, Mount Maserda. Is I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Is um, Transmission Operations Australia is partly owned by the same company in Hong Kong. Okay. Shang, Shang Kong infrastructure, 50%, okay, 50% is owned by the Hong Kong listed group. That's Victoria. Oh, wait, it gets better. Who else has sold themselves out? ACT, the government state, okay. Government owns 50% of Actwell AGL Distro Limited and Jamina, hey. Isn't that, the, isn't that a name I heard before, like, um, in Victoria? Where have I heard that one before? It's written down here somewhere. By the way, they're owned by State Grid Corporate. Wait, what? State Grid Corporate. Who owns State Grid Corporate? Where does that name come up before? Oh, here we go. South Australia. So, South Australia. Also, Trannies, Electronet, has a 46.5% share, State Grid Corporation. 
Stake Corp State Grid Corporation. You'd think that would sound like a government entity though, wouldn't it? But it's actually a private business. Strange. Okay. So the rest yeah. The rest is owned by Jamina. Is a, is owned by Singapore Power International. Okay. WA. You own your grid. Queensland. We own the fucking grid. And that's why any of you boys that are competent should be able to go to do the job. Now I want to show you how I stuffed up my job. Uh, with my metering, and as I said, in Queensland, it's only worth you know three percent of fucking retail. So you know, I expect all electricians to be competent in metering. And there's one mistake I made where I didn't quite read the manual right. So I'm going to pull that out and actually show you guys how I fucked up, so you can learn from it. And that's the main thing about you know being an electrician is you've got to be fucking honest with yourself. If you fuck up, you know, shit happens, man. Like, we have standards for a reason. They should be fucking free. They should be free. And we also have our metering manuals. They are free. And I'm going, to, I'm going to share the link down below. Just for you guys. So you can go fucking read it for yourself. I don't fuck around, okay? I love to get shit done. And I love to do it properly, okay? That's all that's important. And that's all it's really about being an electrician. Is just making sure you can compliant. Understand your legislation. Understand um, your rules and everything. And, mate, she's fucking easy as. Okay, so section three, direct connected metering, okay? Let's just go straight to this part. Insulated flexible cables are approved for use for 10 millimeter, 16 and 25 squared mil. What, unfortunately, I did was parallel 4 mil squared. That's where Trev fucked up. But also listen to why they want to have that wing. For that one long or two short form uninsulated bootlace. I used the insulated bootlace on that job, which is wrong. I uh, securely crimped and snugly and, and snugly. Oh, that's not that's a nice word to use. Against each other uh, to each cable tail tail by the electrical contractor. The use of two bootlaces per cable tail will allow the use of length pins while still allowing the required length to maintain the secure connection to the meter terminals. Now, the, my point is like, mate, those fucking ones that I used were fine. There, there's no problem about them. Upon installation by the distributor, remember, they've changed this word over because we've got different distributors now in, in um, NGX land and Ergon land. Any excess length of pins will be trimmed to suit the depth of the meter being used. An appropriate crimping tool must be used, which is what I've done. So, yeah, it's like I'm partially correct, but I'm fucking wrong. I still don't understand why they want to have to use longer. They'd rather, like, see single insulated fucking wiring hanging out so they can trim it down for to suit each meter. That's kind of weird. So when I did this meter wiring right, you can use you can use 4 mil, but you can't use flex 4 mil. Yeah, it's weird because you can't use these boot laces. You can use them up with 10 mil, but yeah, that's the minimum. I'll actually pull it up and show you. Lucky for me. I can disconnect it from there. Like, it's pretty silly why it can't be done. You can see where both screws have penetrated it. So it was a good connection. Yeah, just silly, stupid rule. Bastards, but that's what we read the book for. Oh, look at this man, there's nothing wrong with that connection. I don't know why it's not allowed. Anyway, reels are reels, aren't they? Got it all ripped out and put the other shit back in. Sweet. Notice the apprentice got the little plastic bits in there. All right, I've redone the meter wiring again. <laughs> Let's turn it back on. 